Hi everybody, welcome down to Carter's Golf. Welcome to Jamira Golf Estates. And we're in the studios today due to the temperature being over 50 degrees. So not gonna bother with the sun today. Hopefully that camera doesn't turn off because of the sunshine as well. But today is a little two-part series. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about the grip and tomorrow we're gonna to be talking about posture. Why? Because they are the two biggest issues I see in the majority of golfers that we teach down here. Also, I think they're the two most important aspects of the golf swing. First of all, the grip is the only thing that connects you to the golf club. And the posture is the one thing that allows you to rotate to the best of your ability. Now, majority of golfers are, are, are not fit for golf. I'm probably not fit for golf. We don't, not many golfers will go and really work that hard on hip flexibility, etc., and the quads and the hamstring and the back. Um, so majority of us are not actually fit for golf. So we need to give ourselves the best opportunity to hit distance, power, height, everything, consistency of the strike. The two things that are gonna give you that to start with is how you hold the club, how you manage this club face, and also how you stand, therefore, so how you can turn. So today's video, we're talking grip. The most common grip that I see is the strong grip. So to go through the strong grip, we're gonna have, for a right-handed golfer, you would generally see the left, the left hand on top of the grip a little bit too much. We'd start to see three to four knuckles on that left hand. The line between the index finger and your thumb that's created will generally go to the right side of your right shoulder. And as a result, your forearm is always turned, turned in, turned under. The forearm's pointing more towards your stomach. So that's all kind of, I would say straight away, we're in a, we're in a bad position there. We're in, a, we're in a bit of a problem. As a result of the hand being so much on top of the club, the left, the right hand can only really come and sit underneath the club because that's only where that's the that's where your space is. So it's generally going to sit underneath the club. We wouldn't see any knuckles. We just see a lot of fingernails and a lot of fingers, but we wouldn't see any knuckles. Okay. So as a result of this, both forearms are now in an unnatural position. Unnatural position at speed is dangerous. The body wants to resort back to its natural forms at speed. That's what's going to be the easiest movement for the body to create, getting back to a natural position. So if I start in this position, my forearm's facing the sky, my left forearm's facing my stomach, my left shoulder's gone a bit high, and as a result, my, my forearms are going to want to rotate quite, quite aggressively through impact, which if the club face has started straight, it's going to come back in closed. And this is where we see a lot of manipulation in golfers. Golfers will actually come back into the ball and try not to try to prevent that rotation. Preventing the rotation by keeping the arms really straight through impact or not allowing the forearms to turn. What's that going to do in your golf swing? It might get you hitting a few shots straighter, but it's certainly going to make your ball striking inconsistent. It's going to affect the ball flight, the height, the distance, all of the above. And that's not a good thing just because we don't want to change the grip. Change your grip, op unlock a whole new avenue of improvements in your golf swing for consistency of ball flight, consistency of angle of attack, consistency of distance and height and strike. Okay, so that's the one shot we see too often. Now, if I use that grip and I actually release the golf club how I should release it, See you later, golf ball. That has gone so far left. So I've gone, I've gone now gone low left. If I start neutral, come back into the ball with a with a correct position in my forearms, it's now going to close my club face. Closing the club face de-lofts the club face at the same time. So we're going to hit low left. Golfers will now come in and try to kind of keep the club face as square as possible coming through, therefore actually not releasing, not releasing the golf club but now being so adamant that the club face can't release, you're going to lose power, you're going to lose speed. One big power source in the golf swing is actually releasing the club down into the back of the ball and through impact. You release that power, you're hitting down on the ball, you're creating height, and you're going to create consistency because you're keeping the club face neutral, and that's what we want to be trying to do. We, want to, we don't want to manipulate a position that we can easily adjust, okay? The more manipulations you have in the golf swing, the more problems you're gonna have, okay? So same goes for a weak grip. A weak grip, we tend to see the, the left hand a little bit more underneath the club and the right hand a bit more on top. So the right hand, we might see three to four knuckles. 
and the left hand we might see none. What this is going to do is going to open the club face at the top of the backswing. If that club face is now open, how do I come back to impact? Well, I've got to do the opposite of what I do with a strong grip. I've got to release that club as early as possible. Now, what could that potentially do to my swing path? Well, it could, it could put the swing path on the outside. It could therefore get the, the hands behind the ball at impact. So already I've still got loads of loft on the club. I'm now I'm potentially, potentially now swinging from out to in. And what's that going to do to my ball flight? It's going to hit the ball high and right with a lot of spin. The opposite to what it's going to do with the strong grip. Do I want to do that? No, because now I'm going to lose at least 30 to 40 yards in distance. And now I'm going to be hitting a 7-iron from 100 yards when I should be hitting a sand wedge or a pitching wedge from 100 yards. So it massively affects your distance. What do we want to see from a neutral grip? So what I like to see is... Using the left hand first, we get some space between the fingers, bottom of the little finger to the middle of the index finger. We're going to see two knuckles on the left hand. The thumb is going to be just down the right edge of the grip. The line that's created as a result of that is between your index finger and your thumb, and that's going to point more towards your chin. Okay? If anything, it can point just to the right side of your chin, towards your right, kind of right shoulder, but not over enough to your right shoulder. As the right hand comes in, I like to see an overlap or an interlock. Baseball, I don't like it because I feel like the hands are going to be working separately from each other and that's not a good thing in the golf swing. We want everything working together, not against each other and fighting each other. So we're going to interlock, bottom of the little finger to the middle of the index finger again. The, the outside of this thumb is going to sit down the lifeline of the right hand and again we're going to see two knuckles on the right hand with the line between the index finger and your thumb going back up towards your chin as well. So now the hands are neutral, they're parallel to each other. The lines between the index fingers and the thumb are pointing in the same direction. That's going to tell me my hands are going to be able to work together during the swing. If that is the case, I can now swing on a, helpful, hopefully, try to swing on a more neutral plane. I can be aggressive with my hands through impact, not overly worrying about going too far left or too far right. And as a result, I can, my angle of attack is going to be better. My consistency of the club face is going to be better. My impact position is going to be better as well. because so I'm not having to manipulate. At the one point of the goal swing, I do not want to manipulate his impact. So I, want to, I want to be free. I want to let it all go. I want to create speed. I want to create power. I want to create an angle that's going to give me height. And I need to create consistency not through manipulation. So grip is so, so important. And it's one of those things that when we do a little half an hour lesson up here at the academy, it's the first thing we try to look at and try to change because it can make the biggest influence on your golf game. Forgetting about where the club head is and what angle it's at, the golf grip controls the golf club. Okay, the golf club controls where the ball goes. So it's always that knock-on effect that we're trying to try to improve on. So try to have a look at where your grip is. If you're quite close to neutral, absolutely fine. If you're erring on the slightly strong side of neutral, absolutely fine. I think if you're erring on the weak side of neutral, try to get it to the strong side. At least then we still get you some distance and we still control the ball flight. Anytime I see a weak grip, alarm bells go because the driver in particular, we're going to lose 20 to 30 yards of distance. We definitely don't want to be doing that. Okay, so we want a grip that's close to neutral. We don't want a grip that's an exaggeration of weak or strong. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Tomorrow's video is all about the posture, so please do join me on that because, again, so, so important that we're able to set up in the right position so we can move efficiently. Please do comment below. How is your grip? Is it strong? Is it weak? And what's it doing to your golf game? Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.